Good afternoon, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick at Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church. Today is April the 26th. It is Wednesday. It's time for our daily devotion. We're continuing in Luke, the seventh chapter, and we are beginning at verse 36. Now, one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume, and as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two men owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he canceled the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt canceled. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much, but he who has been forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. All right. So, uh, in Luke's gospel, whenever Jesus eats at the home of a Pharisee, uh, it always results in a confrontation. So there are three episodes in the gospel of Luke where Jesus eats with a Pharisee. This is the first one. The second one is going to be in Luke chapter 11, I believe. And then the third one is in Luke chapter 14. And um, each of these results in an opportunity for Jesus to call out the Pharisees for their self-righteous behavior. So in the account today, Jesus is having dinner with the Pharisee and this woman just barges in and, and she immediately, you know, wets Jesus' tear, feet with her tears and wipes them with her hair and then anoints them with, with oil. Um, you know, as a way of just acknowledging Jesus, and as being repentant uh, for her sin, uh, because it's assumed that she is probably a prostitute or something along those lines. And uh, Jesus perceives Simon's thoughts about him, that Simon is thinking, well, if, this, if Jesus knew who she was, meaning that she was a prostitute, and you're, as a Jewish man, you're not supposed to have contact with a prostitute, not just because it breaks the sixth commandment, but also because a prostitute is a woman who is... Um, unclean in in some way and uh you don't have contact with a prostitute you don't have you don't welcome them to your table because you know in the first century as i've talked about before who you ate with you know suggested that you accepted that person and who they were what their identity was that you had something in common it's not like today where we will just eat with anybody or um, there's no social ramifications for our eating, right? But in the first century, there were. So uh, this, this notion of fellowship is a very important one. And the Pharisee wants to know more about Jesus. Now, later on, the Pharisees will be watching Jesus because they're, they grow more skeptical of him as, as time goes on. So there's always a confrontation. And, and there's also a duality here in the notion that the Pharisee, who is a religious teacher in Israel and who should have accepted Jesus, does not. And the, the, the woman who is the outcast does. And so we call this the great reversal. And Luke's gospel really does this more than any of the others. That, that the people who uh, you would think would, would have a, an idea about who Jesus is, and uh, they would be the religious leaders, the scribes, the Pharisees, that, that they should be the ones welcoming Jesus, they're often the ones who reject him. And the outcasts, the tax collectors, the sinners, um, the people who are not accepted 
the blind, the lame, uh, the, the Roman centurion, or, you know, all of this. Um, these are the people who seek out Jesus. And so there's this contrast that the ones who should believe in him don't, and the ones who should be rejected, or the ones who should reject him, do believe in him. And, and this just really underscores the importance of grace, that uh, it's not by pedigree, it's not by status, it's not by position that we are forgiven our sins, but it is by the grace of God, and that even the worst of us can be forgiven um, through repentance, through uh, contrition, and, and Jesus, you know, Jesus loves to forgive sins, he loves to absolve uh, but I would definitely contrast that with what we see today, where people are just saying, well, you know, God made me this way, I was born this way, and uh, Jesus loves me as I am. You know, there's all of this sort of reinterpreting of God and his motives and his grace, and and people think that because they feel a certain way in their hearts, um, or they, they, they ascribe that to being created that way by God, and it, it totally overlooks the notion that we are born into sin, that our biology is corrupted by sin, that our thoughts, our emotions are corrupted by sin. And, and this really distorts God's physical creation. And, you know, we're born outside of a relationship with him. So, uh, you know, the woman in the story today is very repentant. She's very sorrowful over the, the life that she has lived. And uh, she is seeking forgiveness. And, and forgiveness has become something of a foreign concept, even a dirty word in our culture, because people don't think they need forgiveness. To, to think you need forgiveness is, is an acknowledgement that you have sin. And people today don't want to think of sin. We're all called to be non-judgmental, to, to not think of anything else that anyone else does as being sinful. And, and so that's why the, the Christianity that we're seeing today is, is really... Um, there's a lot of misinterpretation. There's a lot of um, kind of copying what's in the culture into the church and sort of redoing the church to not even talk about sin uh, or to talk about it just as like your sin. It's like your personal sin. If you can accept that you have personal sin, then Jesus will be your savior. But, but nobody else has sin. Um, you know, you're not supposed to talk about it with anybody else kind of a thing or, or call them out or... Um, you know, say that, hey, you, you have this thing that you're doing that's sinful, and that becomes very offensive. So, uh, you know, it's, it's important to note that the woman today has the right reaction to Jesus, that uh, she confesses her sins and that Jesus forgives her and absolves her and um, says that her faith has saved her, um, faith that is able to grasp the promises of God and the love of God um, that God desires to give to us, not because we've earned it or because we deserve it, um, or even because our confession is uh, sincere enough, but because uh, he is good and gracious and, and he seeks to do this because he loves us. All right, let's continue now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. All right, so email newsletter was just sent out just a few minutes ago, and in it we announced our incoming intern for... Um, Starting this uh, mid-June, her name is Claire Gerard, and she is a Deaconess intern student at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So uh, we have been in contact with her and um, getting her set up to come down here. Um, she'll be down here in just about maybe seven weeks or so. And so um, we're continuing to uh, make preparations for, for transitions. And so um, just continue to, well, we would invite you to keep her in your prayers as she uh, is excited about coming down here and serving us. There's a letter from her in our email newsletter today that talks more about her, her life and her history and her biography and, and some things about her. So we're excited about Claire and um, hope that you are too. Uh, also, Justin Chester, one of our former members, uh, he is up at seminary and he's a classmate of Claire's. And he also received uh, his placement there at Fort Wayne, Indiana, 
which is the same city that the seminary is located in, but he wanted to stay there because his wife is working, and it's just easier a lot of times for married couples to, to stay in um, either Fort Wayne or St. Louis when they get their placements in this type of a situation. So we rejoice in Justin and continue to, to pray for him as well. Uh, let's see, Youth Night is happening tonight at 6 p.m. Choir practice will follow that, and then Mahjong tomorrow at um, 10 a.m., and then Grief Share tomorrow night. Uh, let's see. Um, next, two, no, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, but we do have um, men's breakfast happening uh, the first, let me get this straight, the first Saturday in May. So that's coming up before too long. That's not this Saturday, but it's the following Saturday. We're going to begin to study a new book, The Treatise on the Power and Primacy of the Pope. This is one of the Lutheran confessions that really doesn't get looked at a whole lot, but we're going to jump into it and see what it has to say. I'm excited about this. And uh, I haven't read this for a while, so it'll give me an opportunity to, to get back into this again. And so we, we hope that you can join us. That'll be the first Saturday in May. All right, um, that's all the announcements I have for right now. Thank you for watching our daily devotions. I will be back again tomorrow for uh, continuing in the Gospel of Luke. God's blessings on this the rest of your Wednesday.